take a look at her van. You're living full time. We just shot a video, so you should have seen that already. If you <laughs> want to know why Lisa has purple hair, go see that video. And uh, now we're going to take a tour of your van because you got a great, great van. Thank you. Uh, I just, I've, I've watched your channel and you have a YouTube channel. Yes. And so tell everyone your YouTube channel. It's VAK Vans, V A C A Y V A N S. So check out our channel, and we won't go into a lot of detail because you've got the details on your channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just take a quick look around, give you some really good ideas, uh, things you really like, what you did right, what you did wrong. How long have you been on the road? I've been on the road for 10 months. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. I got, so this is this is Freebird. She's a 2012 Nissan NV 2500 high roof. And I got her um, a year and a half ago from a repo guy. I found her on Craigslist. She used to be a chicken catering delivery van. And when I got her, she was covered in pink and purple, almost like my hair, really. <laughs> like a big, like a big bird and pink and purple all over. And so I got a really good deal on her and um, converted her for three to four months and have been living in her since then. And did you do the conversion yourself? I had a partner at the time and we did the conversion together. And then he realized that van life was not for him. So um, we parted ways and he didn't want the van. So I found myself with the van suddenly alone. And that was not the plan. And I just thought for a long time, can I do this on my own? And I was really afraid for a really? long time. Yeah, I was, I just didn't, the plan was to do it with a partner, you know, and I just never imagined doing it by myself. And so, but eventually I found myself in this situation and I was able to face my fears and I hit the road March of last year and have been on the road ever since. It's weird because I've traveled alone before internationally. I've done things alone. I really like being alone, but for some reason being on the road alone, it did scare me. I just, there's so many unknowns about yes. it. You know, traveling abroad, you stay in a hostel and you make friends. But here, it just I just didn't even know what it was going to look like. And so, how has it been? It's been wonderful. I mean, that that's kind of the thing that I say, you know, the second I hit the road, that moment, I was not afraid anymore. Oh, good. Yeah, it's the time before you make the jump that is the scariest. It, it is. It was for me, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is, I think that's true for most people. Yeah. And but once you're once you got in it, turned the key and drove away, you were pretty calm. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And have you had scary moments? You know, so I had I had a scary moment one of the first nights that I was in the van alone because the first night, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I was um it was it was dark and I didn't know where I was gonna park and I was in the middle of nowhere. And so my thoughts, my monkey mind just yeah. took over. Yeah. And everywhere that I went to park, I was thinking, oh, this isn't safe. You know, is there a person? What's that? And I was just completely in my head. And so I fell asleep that night pretty terrified. I woke up and it was the cutest freaking little town that I had ever seen. There was a little post office and a coffee shop and everyone was so friendly. And when I woke up and I saw the reality versus my, my fears, I realized there's really not any reason to be afraid. You know, it's all internal. And so since that first night of that fear and then realizing how, how it didn't make any sense, I just haven't been afraid since then. Well, that's great. You know, we, we, we build up in our minds the idea of roving uh, gangs of murderers and rapists. Mm -hmm. And we actually think that way. And when you get out here, the reality is you meet the most wonderful, kind people. They give you the shirt off their back. Yeah. They would don't want to harm you in any way. Absolutely. I mean, there are bad people everywhere, of course, but they're rare out here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I hate to say it, but for violence against women, it's more often someone that you know. Yes. And absolutely. Yeah, and I just I haven't had any circumstances that have been scary or dangerous in the van. And the thing is, is that if I did, I'm in a van. I can drive away. Right. <laughs> you know. I consider it to be much safer out here than it would we, you were in the city. Yeah. When just walking from your work to your car can be the risk, and then driving home is the riskiest thing you'll ever do in your whole life. And that's just not true out here at all. Mm -hmm. So you haven't been afraid, so you yeah. kind of got uh, dumped into it alone. Yeah. And uh, 
Do you mind if I ask how much you have in your van? If you don't want to say, don't say. Yeah, the van was, um, I think it was about 16,000 for the conversion. All done. Yes, so the actual van was 11,000. I got a really good deal. I think I could have spent maybe 14. Uh, it had 50,000 miles, 2012. Wow. I yeah. know, I know, I got a really good deal. And then the conversion was a little more expensive than it probably, than it, than it could have been. You know, looking back, of course, hindsight's 2020. But you've got a really nice van. Yes. A home you really enjoy. Yes. And yeah. that's worth whatever you have to pay for it. Yeah. Right. I love it. You, you could be living in this thing for a long time to come, so you might as well really enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. And how are you supporting yourself on the road? We had a video, and so let me say you should go on back and watch mm -hmm. the video we did about money. But just to for those who haven't seen it, how are you supporting yourself on the road? So I was a lawyer, and then I started flipping houses and renovating houses. I had a sustain, um, sustainable design company for a little while as well. And so now I do some legal work remotely, part-time. I have rental properties in Austin, Texas that I manage remotely. And then I also help put on van life events with van life diaries. And, um, you know, now I'm kind of just doing the YouTube thing and just kind of hustling. <laughs> Good. Good. Sounds, and it's enough for you to live on. Yeah. Is the bottom. And because you live so cheaply. Yes, absolutely. Right. So go watch that video on money. We won't, we won't go through all that again. So tell me all about how you built your van. Yeah. So I have a sustainable design background. And so for me, it was really important to try to make the van more sustainable than not. Indoor air quality is really important in our homes. And so when you're living in 60 square feet, the uh, air that you're breathing, it's important for it to be as healthy as possible. So for the insulation, I used wool, which is chemical free. It's antimicrobial and it's moisture resistance. There's also, um, and the ability for air to pass through, which is really nice. Um, so there's no moisture getting blocked off um, inside the interior of the van. The paint was no VOC paint. So that's good for indoor air quality. The flooring is linoleum flooring, which also doesn't have any um, chemicals um, emitting into the air. A lot of the laminates that we use have a lot of really bad chemicals and formaldehyde that can get into the air. And cheap, cheap flooring can off gas in your air for up to five years. So it's just something to pay attention to. I tried to use some reclaimed materials. This, um, the cabinet doors are old tongue and groove flooring from a Texas uh, barn outside of Austin, Texas. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it really warms up the space. Um, I just love using reclaimed materials. They're a pain in the butt to use, but it's really worth it. Absolutely. The layout, I spent a lot of time thinking about the layout. You always have to kind of balance, um, you have to sacrifice something when you're living in 60 square feet. So instead of doing the raised bed where I have more storage in the back, I ended up doing this bench to bed conversion setup because I work remotely and I spend a lot of time working in the van, outside the van, around the van. So you'll see these two um, bumps on the floor. These are for uh, my table. One of the back pieces of my benches turns into a tabletop. And so I can put my table either you know here or there, depending on where I want to work and how I want to set up the the bed and bench situation. You have a, a really cool video on your site, how you change it from this to your bed in 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you time it and it's like a, a 62 second, a minute and a half, a uh, minute and two second video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. I, I know, I just, it's, I, I knocked it out, you know, did it pretty well. And I mean, honestly, people always say like, oh, isn't that a pain in the butt to make your bed every day? I'm like, well, oh, it's, it's 60 seconds. So it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. But I will say that I actually usually only make this part of the bed because I am 5'2". And so a lot of times I'll just set up half of the bed and I'll leave that as a bench. So that's like 30 seconds. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that, that couldn't be any simpler. Yeah. <laughs> so there's storage underneath all of this. Um, there's actually quite a bit, quite a bit of storage. I have sewing machines in here. I have my... Um, 4,000 amp inverter. 
4,000 watt inverter, 100 amp battery under there as well. And then I have uh, my little propane tank right in here. I just have a one gallon propane tank. Mm -hmm. I use that for cooking and it lasts me eight weeks, 10 weeks. Yeah. It lasts a long time. So like three gallons for two months. Yeah. I mean, $3 for two months. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I had no idea this little baby lasts forever. Yeah. It's really cool. So I made window covers that fit over all of the windows. On one side, it's Reflectix. Mm -hmm. In the middle, there is a thermal fabric in there that um, that is really a really good thing. I highly recommend the thermal fabric. And then this is just a pretty fabric on the on the front. Mm -hmm. So you know, these are my window covers, and they fill up the windows completely, and they keep they really keep the air either warm or cool in here, depending on what you want it to be. And uh, mentioning the windows, you must have put these windows in. I did. Yes. So for the windows, you know, I really, it's important to have some cross ventilation. Very. So that's why I put the two windows here. Uh, if I were to do it again, I might make them a little bit bigger, but I thought that I wanted the wall space for extra storage. So it's kind of a balance. I definitely recommend having these windows, windows that open, because when you're sleeping here, you know, if you're not in a place where you can open your back doors, it's really nice to have this ventilation. And then I put this window here in the kitchen for task lighting. Like a lot of times we have under cabinet lighting for when we're, you know, cooking. And so this kind of does that, has that effect where it's able to bring light right here where you're going to be, you know, washing your food and, and washing your dishes. Mm -hmm. The kitchen is pretty big. It's very big. Really. I'm not going to lie to you. This kitchen is kind of ginormous. I mean, this is a lot of countertop space. It really is. I put this window in for daylighting. It's really, really nice because when you're here cooking, you can see out and it's gorgeous. And this is also cool because it's raised up so people can't see in. So this is a window that I can always have uncovered if I wish, because like during the day, because people can't see in because it's higher up. And so I have this light and you know more privacy as well, which is a good combination. This countertop pops up and you have a huge amount of space. You do, between both sides. Yeah, I mean, well, I used to design houses. So in my mind, it was like kitchen, kitchen, that's the most important thing. And so I really have created an awesome kitchen and I love it, I really love it. The eureka moment was when I realized that I could fit the fridge in between the two front seats. That's nice. Yeah, that was really the moment that I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> because it opened up all of this space here for storage. Um, in a house, you the smallest opening that you really want for a walkway is 24 inches. And so when this is down, th this entry and exit is 24 inches. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be any bigger personally. And so I decided to cut into the sliding door space and build this cabinetry. This is a three burner stove that's propane. And then this is my drawer for my kitchen. And as you can tell, it's a complete mess in here right now. It probably could be half the size if I organized it properly. <laughs> you never know. You really don't need that much storage space once you once you live in a van, you realize you don't need more than like, you know, two cups and two plates. Well, you got to cook, you know. Yeah, definitely. You save a whole lot of money if you cook, you eat healthier. Yeah, def yeah, I do and I cook all the time. Uh, I have dedicated trash and dedicated recycling. I can cook everything that I used to cook in this van. I mean, the only thing is I don't have an oven, but I didn't really use my oven that often anyways. So, you know, I'm able to make almost everything that I made when I lived in a house now. Mm -hmm. For my water, I have five gallon fresh and then five gallon gray. This is a stainless steel uh, jerry can. And that's really nice because I don't have plastic. I don't think I've ever seen uh, stainless steel before. Oh, cool. That's unique. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, it's just nice because the plastic doesn't seep into your water. Mm -hmm. They're saying now that uh, BPA free really isn't BPA free. So. Oh, great. Yeah. And here I have uh, my toilet that is an electric um, toilet. It's basically a bagging system. It's basically like a diaper genie mm -hmm. in a toilet. So it kind of vacuum seals it? Exactly. Yeah, it vacuum seals it. I think it's about 17 flushes for each cartridge. And, um, you know, it's it's definitely not the most affordable option. It's definitely the most expensive option. <laughs> It is. It is. It's also the most convenient. It's, you know, it's really a balance. It's what I got before I moved into a van and before I knew anything about living in a van. And so, you know, I would maybe get a composting if I were to redo it again today, but this is what I use and it's what's worked for me. Right. I kind of reorganized everything recently and I was trying to think of the things I use all the time and I was trying to make them the most accessible. So here's all my power bank. And then all of my clothing is in this front area mm -hmm. here. It surprises me that a lot of people don't utilize the storage above the front seats. Right. I don't really know why. Uh, this is a huge amount of storage. It is. And I have all of my clothes in these bags because otherwise it would be a complete wreck. Yes. <laughs> Right, and um, soft bags work by far the best. Yeah. They get smaller as they empty out and put them into a, a laundry bag and works really, really well. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I, and I have all of my tops and all of my bottoms, you know, in, in one bag. And so I'm able to kind of throw things around in here and it still doesn't get too messy. And then this is um, something I really love. It's a small thing, but oh, yeah. it's a big thing. Yeah, having this door open like this, I automatically turn this space from my kitchen into my bathroom. And so I usually have, it's a little crazy in here right now, but I have my kind of toiletries here. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to, you know, wash my face and brush my teeth. And I'm not sticking my face in the rear view window. Right. And, you know, it's just nice to have a mirror and to kind of get yourself ready. And I obviously like to, you know, get myself ready. <laughs> and take care of how I look and you know so it's really nice to be able to do that have the luxury to do that in a right. van cute stuff yeah gotta have the cute stuff gotta you make a home yeah exactly it's, you don't want just a place you hang out you want a home yeah and that's kind of my favorite thing about Freebird is that this is a place where people gather and this becomes where all the the parties are you know the after parties everyone can kind of come in here and sit and when you open all the doors, it's so open and cozy at the same time. Mm -hmm. if I love the layout. I wouldn't change it for right. sure. Um, I probably didn't need the AC unit. I built the van out in Austin, Texas. And so not having an AC didn't even cross my mind. Right, no. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, I live in a van, so I don't have to be in Austin, Texas in the summer. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the one question that we haven't answered for folks is how do you shower? I usually go to a gym. I, the first year I did this, I had a Planet Fitness membership. I'm going to get a different gym membership because I wanted to go to some place that I would actually work out. But Planet Fitness is a really good option. It's 30 something a month if you want access to all of the gyms around the country. They say 10 something, but that's only for one Planet Fitness location. Um, so gym is a really good option for showering. I just bought a solar, five gallon solar shower bag for, um, you know, if I just want to do something quick mm -hmm. outside. So that's a really good option too. Those work really well. Um, so I could have just 10 gallons fresh water. And, you know, if I'm using biodegradable soap, have my gray water drain and then maybe hook up the shower in the back, perhaps. Outside? Yeah. Outside? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would just, yeah, just outside. But I mean, I don't know. That's it's different. People do have different opinions about that. So I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do or not. But um, that really, I just don't shower that often anymore. Just a sponge bathe. Yeah. You know, what do we do before indoor plumbing? We sponge bathe. Um, mm -hmm. Water in a basin and and washcloths and wet wipes. Yeah, right. And I mean, you can't really dye this, you can't get this hair wet that often anyways, or it'll start <laughs> fading. So, you know, it works for the lifestyle. <laughs> right. You live for your purple hair. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it works. 
<laughs> I'm a big fan of the Nissan, and people ask me why I don't have more. Uh, my one concern about them is the gas mileage. How's that been for you? I think that it's about 14.5. Right. Um, which is a lot more than what I was used to. I used to have a, a tiny Honda Civic. So, you know, it's not great. There is a lot of cabinetry in here, though. There is. I mean, this whole thing is wood cabinetry, if you look at it. So it's possible that I would have better gas mileage if I didn't have so much weight. But, it's yeah, it's not, it's not great. No, I don't think anyone gets better in 15 or 16. Really? Yeah, that's about what they get. It's, uh, it's a big, powerful engine. You could tow, you know, because it's such a big, powerful mm. engine. But, uh, yeah, they just, they're not known for their gas mileage. Yeah, but I haven't had any, any issues with the van at all. Nothing Good. weird. Right. They're a great, sol they're a great van. Yeah. They're a real solid van. Just yeah. mediocre gas mileage. Yes, absolutely. Um, I also have a little storage nook right here for right now I have my yoga mat, but sometimes I'll throw some shoes there. Like if I have some muddy shoes or something, they can just kind of fit. Just goes underneath there. Yeah, and that little crevice there so that you don't have to bring them inside. And, and this is really nice. I just cut up this welcome mat um, and it just picks up a lot of the dirt, which is pretty important when you're in such a small space. And then this is pretty sweet. Oh, how nice. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. And uh, tell everyone again your uh, YouTube channel and your social media. Yeah, I'm VK Vans, uh, Instagram, YouTube, all of the above. If you have any more questions about the build, I'm more than happy to make more videos or tell you about that. Just reach out to me on YouTube. Very good. Thanks so much, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. And folks, there you have it. Another great video, another real inspiration. Mm -hmm.